Hello, let's write a Python program that analyzes one of the Shakespeare plays and counts the occurrences of the words. So we'll find the most frequently used words in a Shakespeare play. And let's do Julius Caesar. So here is the play, the contents of the play. Let's copy that into a file in our file system here. And I'll delete extra stuff at the top. Okay, so there's our play. And now um, we want to read this file into a Python program. So let's write code for that. And we're going to use with open play.txt as file. Uh, you may know that with used with open will automatically close the file when we're done with it. When we stop indenting under with, that's when the file will be closed. Um, now we want to process each line in the file. So we can use a loop like this for line and file. And then for each word inside each line, we're going to do something with it. So we want to say for word in and we're going to take the line and split it on white space. So spaces, um, tabs. And then for each of those words, we need to uh, clean the word of punctuation because some, when we, if we split on white space, we may end up with some words with a comma at the end or a period or a colon. So we will create a new variable here called cleaned, and that will get the value of the word. Also, we're going to turn the words to lowercase because in order to count the uh, instances of the words, we want to compare them. And if you have, sometimes you have you, the first letter capitalized and sometimes not, then they would be treated as different words. So we want to turn the word, each word, to lowercase. And then we're going to strip out the punctuation. And punctuation comes from um, the string module. So we'll do that. All right, now we have all the words turned to lowercase, stripped of their punctuation, and now we need to um, count how many there are. Um, now, how are we going to do that? Do we want to create um, a variable for every possible word we might encounter and then just add one to it each time we encounter the word and have a bunch of if statements? No, there's a better way. We'll use a dictionary and we'll call it counts. This makes an empty dictionary. Now, when it's time to add the word to the dictionary, we will do it like this. We'll say um, the counts of the word is equal to, and um, if this is the first time that we're encountering this word, we want to say one. Otherwise, if the word is already in our dictionary, we want to take the current count and add one to it and store that result back in. So we could we could say um, we could try to access the current value like this, but this will fail if we if this is the first time we're encountering it. So instead of using this uh, square bracket syntax for accessing an element of a dictionary, we're going to use the get method uh, because it won't fail. And if we use this optional second argument here and give it a zero, then what that means is if the word we're looking for isn't yet in our dictionary, we'll get a zero out. Um, so we'll either get a non-zero value out or the word doesn't exist and we'll get a zero out. And then we want to add one to that. So if this is the first time we're encountering a word, we'll be storing a one as the value of the dictionary element with the word as the key. 
Um, okay, that's good. And now, why don't we see what we have so far? So, so let's do this. And I'll run. And here are all the words in no particular order because dictionaries don't provide any ordering. And so you see that we have a dictionary. The first element is the word act, which is all uppercase. Oh, okay, I see I made a mistake here. I'm supposed to be using the cleaned version of the word here. Let's rerun. Now act is in lowercase. There's seven occurrences of the word act. There are 520 occurrences of the word I. Here's scene, here's Rome, and so on. So this seems to be working pretty well for um, counting. Um, now I think it's time we ignored a certain class of words known as stop words. And these are words like these. And you can find a list of stop words. These are words that we really don't want to count because they don't tell us much about what's going on in the play. So we want to now change the program so we load in those stop words into a set. And why a set and not a dictionary? Well, we don't, we're not counting or keeping any information about each of the stop words. We just want to have a set of the stop words. And then before we add a word to our dictionary, we'll check and see if it's in the stop words. And that's... Um, very quick because sets are very fast for seeing if a value exists in the set. Okay, so we need another one of these widths. So I'm going to duplicate this line and we have a file called stopwords.txt. And then um, once we have the file, we can create the set using a set comprehension. Now we could create an empty set and loop over the lines in the file to get the words and then add the words to the file. But we can do it all in one statement with a set comprehension. So we do this, stop words equals, and a set comprehension. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, but you're familiar with a list comprehension, it's very similar. It's identical, as far as I know, except that you use braces instead of square brackets to delimit the comprehension. And then here, we what do we want to get? Well, we want for every line in the file. And what do we want for every line in the file? Well, we want the line itself, but we want to do a strip to remove the new line character from the end of each line. And now we should have a set of our stop words. So let's just, to prove that, I'm going to print stop words here, and I'm going to comment out the other print, and I'm going to run. Here's the set of stop words. And just like uh, the dictionary, it's not in any particular order. So this is just the order it happens to be in. So let me just zip across here. There are the stop words. Great. So no longer need to print that. Then here, um, what we want to do is add a test if cleaned not in stop words. Only then do we use it. Okay, now let's print the counts again and run. And now you see we don't get any of those stop words in here. So act, scene, roam, and so on. That's great. I think we're gonna find some kind of Shakespeare type words that really should be stop words and maybe we'll add them. But the next thing we need to do is sort this because we wanna find out, we wanna order these words in the order of most um, frequent the largest number of occurrences to smallest. So let's add some code to uh, sort that. Okay, so there's a function called sorted that's built in, and you give it the thing that you're sorting, and here we have our dictionary called counts, 
And then you tell it what you're sorting on. So we'll say key equals counts dot get. And get gets the value, which is the, the count, the number of occurrences of the word. And we also want to reverse the order so that the most frequently used words appear first. Okay, so that's that provides us a sorted list of the words themselves, but not the counts, just the words. So we have to do a little bit more um, to get the counts that go with each word. Um, let's loop over this. So for word in the sorted list of words. Now we'll add a colon here. And now we will just print. We're going to print um, the word and then a tab character and then the count of the words. So we're going to use an F string. And the F string is used for uh, combining various pieces together to make a string. So it looks, it's in this form, F, and then either single or double quotes. And um, now we'll plug in things. So we need to plug in the word. There's the word. And now we need a tab character, which we make with the backslash T. And then we need to get the count um, for that word. So we use our counts dictionary with word as the key, and that'll give us the count for each word. Okay, I can run this, but it's going to be a long list, so I think what I'll do is just modify this list with a slice, and I'm going to say, just give me the first 10. And do I have another print I need to remove? Yes. Uh, let's run. This should be the most 10, uh, 10 most frequently used words in the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar. And here they are, Brutus, Caesar, Cassius, Anthony. Those, the top four are the names of people in the play. Now, shall thou maybe come and oh, good. Maybe we should add these to the, to the stop list. Um, but let's get a little bit more. So maybe we'll get the top 20. And also, if we just have a number in here in the code, that doesn't make it clear to the reader what the point of this is. So I'm going to do an extract constant refactor, and I'm going to call this num results. So somebody reading this can see that, well, we're not interested in, in everything. We just want some number of results. And if I go up to the top of the file, you see that this is the constant that's created there. All right, when I run now, we should see 20. Great. Now, do we want to modify? Do we want to add any more stop words? I think we might just do that. Die the... All right, now we'll rerun. Here are our top 20 now. So this is better. And now, um, you might have wondered why I printed these with... Um, one second here why I printed these with a tab in between that, and that's so that I can copy and paste these into a spreadsheet. So let's grab these and copy, and then I'll start a spreadsheet program. And paste. So here they are. And let's see, that's probably a little small looking, so I'll make it bigger. There they are, and now I'm, I want to make a chart out of it. I'll make a bar chart. And so there, um, in a nice graphic, is the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar, uh, the most commonly used words, excluding the stop words. Okay, quick review of the code, I think. Let's have a look. Close all these. Um, so punctuation contains all the punctuation that we're, that we're stripping. So, um, exclamation point, quote, hash, dollar, percent, ampersand, and all these others. Now results is how many words we want to see at the end. Counts is our dictionary. The key of the dictionary is a word. The value of the dictionary element is the number of occurrences of the word. 
Then we use with along with open to open the, the file of stop words. And we use a set comprehension to create a set from each line in the file that we then strip the new line character from. And then we open the plays text and read each line. And then we split each line by, by uh, white space, uh, usually just a space character. Then we turn each word into lowercase and strip out the punctuation and we call that cleaned. And then we see if the cleaned word is not in the stop words. And if it's not, then we add the word to the dictionary or we add one to the value for the word in the dictionary. And we use get and get will use the key you give it to try to locate a value. And with this form of get, if it doesn't find a value, it'll give you a zero. And that's perfect because we either get a zero or some number larger than zero, which we then add one to. And once we've done that, we have the new count and we save that into the dictionary underneath the, the word. And the last part is using this sorted function to take the dictionary and sort it by values in reverse order. And we uh, only take the number of them that we want. And then we print the word and then we look up in the dictionary for that word what the uh, counts value is. So there you go. Uh, try this maybe with your own uh, text. It could be a news article. It could be a, a, a play. It could be um, any kind of, uh, it could be a poem. Um, so I'll put a link to the code in the video description. See you next time.